it's uh, that time of the month again, i.e. the time of the month to make a TBR. <laughs> um, so in light of recent world events, I'm doing something that's maybe not unexpected for a TBR for this upcoming month. I don't know. But having heard of all those hate crimes and things that are going on, I will probably end up reading other things beyond this list because let's face it, I never stick fully to my TBR. But the books that I have planned for the month that I really, really, really want to get to and read are by Asian authors. And I have a whole bunch of them sitting right next to me. But that's kind of the theme I'm going with because I feel like... Yes, it's good to do like donations and things and help support people in that way, but maybe if I get some of their names and their books out there too, um, I guess I don't know if they're all Asian American or just Asian even, but you know, that kind of a thing, if I'm like showing support that way, I feel like that's better than what some people might do, which is either just ignore it entirely or assume that just donations are it, but I want to feel like I'm doing something that's on my end and my personal goals too, kind of like with trying to read more diversely just in general. After all the Black Lives Matter stuff that happened last year, I think it's a good idea to focus on some Asian stuff and say, hey, I support you, I don't agree with the bigotry that people are showing you, all that kind of thing. So, let's hop into the books that I have. <laughs> First off, I have The Factory by Hiroko Oyamada. This is one that I'm pretty sure I read the description of at one point, and I could read it again right now, but I actually um, was watching a different booktuber talk about this author, but the book that they were talking about, my library did not have, so I picked up this one instead. Um, but yeah, so let, let's jump into it real fast. It's a story of three workers in an industrial factory and then it kind of goes throughout kind of the different ways that they respond to their job and then their lives are slowly governed by work with a strange logic and momentum and reality starts seeming to dissolve. Where does the factory end and the rest of the world begin? And what's going on with the strange animals here? And so it's like, what am I doing here? And it, it sounds like an interesting philosophical kind of introspective piece. I read um, If All the Cats Disappeared from the World last year, and I feel like it might have some similar tonal writing and stuff to that. So I'm excited and curious to try that one out. Next up, <laughs> we have The Dragon Warrior by Katie Zhao. This one, I think, is probably more towards, like, the middle grade and stuff, but I love middle grade still, so I don't mind that. Um, I actually recently started following her <laughs> on Twitter, and uh, so I picked up this book because I was like, yes, let's support this author that I'm following anyways. Uh, this one... Born into San Francisco's exclusive jade society, Farin Liu longs to become a powerful warrior. Only problem, since their father disappeared, Farin and her brother Alex have been forbidden from training and must hone their skill in secret. Um, and then there's a real-life demon that comes to Chinatown, and it just sounds like a, a fun, adventurous little romp, and I'm here for it. <laughs> I could use a fun, sort of light-hearted fantasy right now, so sounds great. Um, next I have The Trouble with Hating You by Sajni Patel. This one is an enemies to lovers romance, I want to say. Um, Leah is a successful biochemical engineer, takeout enthusiast, and happily single woman. And then her parents are trying to set her up, and then the guy shows up in her office trying to save her company, and so he's not thrilled to see her either after how dinner went. So yeah, enemies to lovers. Um, I really have enjoyed the books by uh, Sandra Menon recently, and I believe that um, this author is also Indian like Sanja Menon, so I'm, I have high expectations for this. I don't normally go for like the enemies to lovers super much, so that part I may be a little hesitant on, but I want to give it a shot anyways and see if I like it. 
see if there are some out there, I guess, that are tolerable to me. Which is probably true because I feel like there's a few movies and stuff I've watched that would classify as that. But like the general idea of it, I usually am not fond of enemies to lovers. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, and then next I have The Hundred Secret Senses by Amy Tan. Uh, recently I've gotten into her nonfiction stuff. I read two books of hers that were talk her talking about her writing and I think the one was a little like autobiographical and stuff too. So this will be the first of her novels that I've read uh, but I'm really looking forward to it because I really liked her writing style based on the memoirs and stuff that I've been reading by her so I think this one will be really fun too. Uh, the general synopsis of this one is that it's gonna talk a bit about American assumptions about the Chinese, um, the main character meets a half-sister she never knew, um, and then there's this thing called yin eyes in it that let people see ghosts and stuff, and it just sounds like an interesting romp, and I'm curious to see. This one even might have specifically been mentioned in her memoirs, and that's part of why I picked this one specifically, because I know like the Joy Luck Club is probably her most popular book. But this one sounds more interesting to me. So we're starting with the one that sounds more interesting to me. Um, then next, I have quite a lot of books this month, I feel like. But again, I want to support the Asian authors. And I already had all these from the library. So I may as well make it a goal and a focus of the month. Um, but next we have Sorcerer to the Crown by Zen Cho. This one is about a royal institution of magic, I think. Um, and it falls into disgrace, and then it deals with England and stuff, there's Fairyland, I'm doing a bad job trying to summarize just from pulling out a few words from the background, but it, it sounds like it could be good and interesting, and it's got a fun dragon on the cover, so why not? It'll be a good adventure, I think. Okay. Um, the next one I have, I'm not sure if it counts as Asian, technically, because <laughs> they might actually be like Middle Eastern or something, but I've been wanting to read it anyway, so I'm going to put it on my list. The next one I have is A Thief Among the Trees by Saba Tahir. This does say that it's technically an Ember in the Ashes graphic novel, and I have not read an Ember in the Ashes. Um, but I've kind of been in the mood for a graphic novel, and I feel like this could be a good taste to see if I want to try out Ember in the Ashes. And if we're going to talk about how I judge and read things, too, despite that it's a graphic novel based in the, the world of an Ember in the Ashes, whether or not that's the case, if it's well written, it won't matter if I have that background or not. <laughs> um... Which, like, I feel like if short stories can do that and stuff, which sometimes you'll get short story anthologies from a world that'll do things like that or attempt to do things like that. So if you can manage that, or I can still enjoy it without the context of having read the novel, I think that's pretty impressive. So we'll see. But I'm very curious about it. It looks fun. I like graphic novels. And I've kind of been in the mood for one. So there's that. <laughs> Next up on my list, we have The Hole by He Young Pyon, and this one is a psychological thriller about loneliness and the dark truths we try to bury. Um, the main character has woken up after a coma that took his wife's life and it left him paralyzed and disfigured, so he's now with his mother-in-law. Um, who is, of course, grieving the death of her child and things like that, too. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how it goes. I, I don't think I've ever read a thriller by a Korean author, so I'm, I'm really curious to see how this one goes. Um, I do enjoy thrillers a lot. And generally, about, like, once a month is my threshold for them, though. <laughs> so that'll be my th uh, thriller for the month, and it'll be a good variety from a lot of the thrillers that I read, which are, like, white person writing thriller novel in the vein of, like, the Ruth Ware books, if you've seen any of my reviews on those, 
or like Dean Koontz even would definitely qualify, I feel like, as Thriller and just white person writing it. So it, it'll be fun to see a Thriller from a different nationality than white. I'm very excited. <laughs> and then the final book that I have for my list, we finally made it, is going to be a faux love story. This one is by Loan, I assume, Lee? Or maybe Loan, but I assume Loan since it's... Chinese, and that sounds more Chinese to me, not that I know Chinese to really judge, but Loan just is how I'm going to say it, because I don't know how it's pronounced, and I should have looked it up, but I did not. But this one, we've got our main characters who are kind of opposites of each other. The one has decent grades, unremarkable social status, his parents' fifth favorite employee, which is a fun standout line from this description. And then the female is a firecracker, uh, stable when unlit, but full of potential for joy and spark on um, fire. And she loves art and dreams and pursuing her career. Um, and so the families have been at odds, so it might actually even have some tastes of like Romeo and Juliet from the sound of that. Um, but it is a romance. And so I'm curious to see how it turns out. It sounds like a nicer one, or less of a le enemies to lovers, I shouldn't say nicer. It sounds like less of an enemies to lovers, because it sounds like more their families have been warring than these two characters not liking each other specifically. So I think this one will probably be more to my taste than the thing about hating you, but I'm curious to see how both of them go. Uh, but yeah. That's my April TBR. Many, many books. I think I can get through them all if I really try and focus, but I'll probably get distracted by other books along the way, because that's what I always do with these things. Um, but yeah, the goal is to read the Asian authors, so that's what I'm trying to do with this list. If you've read any of these, feel free to leave your opinions if you think you'll, I'll like them or not down below. Um, if you're excited to read any of these, if you've discovered a book that you want to read just from seeing these, feel free to let me know. If you have your own TBR, I'd love to watch other people's. It's always fun to find new books that way. Uh, but that's all I've got for now. This is the Umla Harper, signing out.